Welcome, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Today's video is on how to create a corrugated metal panel family for use in a Revit project. This video is in response to a request by an end user on a previous video that I created. In this particular video, the family was built by somebody else and they wanted to know how was it built. So this video was a quick one that explained that and the end user wanted to go in depth on it. So I'm going to create this video in response to that. Now we work with, we work with uh, Revit and you're building corrugated metal panels. Um, think about how it's going to be used. Is it going to be in a vertical application, a horizontal application, or in a, an angled application? That will help you dictate how you want to build the family. Um, let's approach it from this initial end user's um, perspective where we have just a regular Revit family and that family is built as a sweep. What I did as well is I just went online and found a website that had a whole bunch of corrugated metal panel profiles and they're CAD files so I just downloaded them to use so I don't have to try to draw it exactly with measurements. I can just use the CAD file as an underlay. So here I am in Revit 2019 I can click New to create a new family. And in this case, we want to create a profile. So I'll head over to the P and click Profile. Click Open and it starts up. When we are working with creating the profile, you can assign it a category and a usage for the purposes of what we're trying to do. Since we're not sure how we want to use it, we're going to leave it as generic. But you can click inside here and tell it to be used as different various ways, okay? Um, you are presented with a floor plan view and two reference planes that dictate the insertion point because defined origins is checked on both, which means the intersection is the insertion point. Since we are creating a sweep, we head over to the Create tab of the ribbon and we can start creating the sweep now. When we do this approach, we can create this profile initially and save this profile as a family. Then we can load it into another family that is using the sweep command. Using the line command, I can draw the lines. But again, like I said earlier, I have the CAD file. So I will click insert and import the CAD file. Pick my CAD file, which I put in the temp folder. And it comes in. And if you zoom all, you can see where it placed it. I'm going to unpin it and move it into the position that I need roughly and zoom in. Now, in this particular CAD file, I have two different profiles that I threw in there. I'm going to use the larger one <clears throat> because it's easier to see. So I'm going to select the CAD file and move it exactly where I want, which in this case is this intersection to this intersection. It's important to know and where to place it because you're going to be repeating the design. Don't explode the CAD file, just use it as a backdrop, an underlay if you will, and trace the line work. So using the line command, I can use a pick method if I want to, and pick the line work. I do not need to lock the line work to the CAD file because I'm going to be getting rid of the CAD file anyway. Now, one last one. Be careful as well when you create in the line work because you want to create it such that it has a repeating pattern that makes logical sense. You wouldn't draw this little sliver over here. Okay? And you have to think about where this ends and where this starts. So since I don't need the cat file anymore, I can just select it and delete it. <clears throat> I'm left with the line work. Now, to create a profile family using the sketch lines that we drew, you need to make sure it's a closed loop sketch. So continuing with the line command, I can use the pick method with an offset. We'll do the eighth inch for now. And then I will put my mouse over the line work. If I hit tab, I might be able to tab into and grab all of them. Since I cannot, I can try another location and see if it does it. If it doesn't do it, then you'll have to manually click the, each of the line segments, like so.
just watch where the dashed line goes because that affects your design. So I worked a little quickly and I thought maybe I messed up over here, but I didn't. So that's okay. <clears throat> Let's um, go ahead and pick the line work that I want. And let's move the three lines that I drew because the offset feature moved it down instead of up. So I want to move it up by a quarter of an inch. And now it's up. Remember, you'd have to have a closed loop, so make sure you clean up all the ends and you have a nice design situation. Sometimes Revit will clean up the corners for you. Other times it may not. So zoom in and use trim to corner. And make sure you do this for all the intersections. Like so. Now this last one here, it's going to be a design situation where it may need to repeat a certain amount, okay? But for now, let's just keep it simple. I'm going to draw over here this last line work by taking this angled line and mirroring it off the midpoint of this line. And then, again, trim to corner so you have a nice closed loop. So this is my profile that I've drawn that's going to be a profile family. I will save the file and I'll put it as test profile. Now that that's there, I can load this into another family that's a generic model family that has the sweep command. So I will start a new family and head over to G for generic model. Again, I'm not worrying about the categorization for scheduling yet. I can do that later. Head over to the sweep command. Now, I'm going to use the 3D view so it's a little easier to see. Start the sweep command. The first thing you want to do is draw the path. So if I have objects to pick, I can use the pick path to pick the edges of the object. I'll use sketch path and draw my line work. Now, since I'm in a 3D view, I'm going to go from a top-down approach and draw a simple line. I can make it any length that I want. I'm not worried about it. You get the magenta line that represents the path, you get a reference plane in the insertion point. Finish the sketch of the path by hitting the green check mark. Now you want to put in the profile. We can either sketch it or we can load it in. I'm going to click load profile and go get that profile that I created earlier. It's called test profile. Now that it's loaded in, I have to go under the drop-down list and specify the one that I want. <clears throat> You'll see it gets placed exactly where it needs to. And that's the profile that's going to be used to extrude, in this case, sweep, uh, along that path. So I hit the green check mark, and it builds that little piece. See? And then you can load it into the project and use it. Now, what about the situation if you want to use this as a curtain panel? We're going to go ahead and close these files and look at it from that design approach. So I'll click New for Family. <clears throat> this time I want Curtain Wall Panel and click Open. The way this family is set up is it has a reference plan view. It has the exterior side, the interior side an equality condition for the left side and the right side of the curtain panel. And if I go to the exterior elevation, you can see there's a top reference plane and there's a bottom reference plane as well. So that's the height. <clears throat> In this situation, we're going to create an extrusion. We're going to create a profile on the reference level right here. And it's going to be extruded vertically. And it's going to go up to here and we align and lock the top and the bottom. So going back to the reference level, we create the extrusion. Start the extrusion command. 
it goes into sketch mode and it's asking you to draw the magenta lines that represent the outside edges of your profile. So again, we can go through the same approach. We can click insert, import the CAD file, pick the profile. This time I'm going to do center to center. That way it just puts it dead center. And then um, it's just for temporary purposes. Do zoom extent so you can see where that file sits. Select the CAD file. And let's move it up to where we need to move it. Now, this CAD file that was brought into sketch mode affects the performance. You saw that warning earlier. What it's trying to do is it's trying to explode the CAD file and give you the magenta lines that represent the sketch. So what I'm going to do is delete what I don't need. And move what I need into the position that I want. So I'm going to take these and move them, in this case, to that intersection. Okay. Now this is only the left side and the right side needs to be equal. So if we continue this design, we need to add this information and this line and copy it over to here. Now, we have to think about where it starts and where it ends because this is an end condition, this is a midpoint condition. So we will probably want to take this and move it so that the midpoint is at that intersection. Then we can get rid of what we don't need, trim back what we don't need, and then over here draw the line work that's missing like so. Now we do need to align and lock the sketches to the planes that they're drawn on so that they hold properly when you're stretching and when you are flexing the family. Now, in sketch mode, like I said earlier, it needs to be a closed loop. So we need to continue drawing this to make sure it's drawn properly. So I'm going to use the pick method with an eighth, in, eighth inch thickness. Zoom in here and try to hit tab and see if it picks everything. If it does, good. But watch where it draws the sketch line work, okay? I'm going to draw it at the top side, not the bottom and then finish the line work at the ends, like so. And then we want to align and lock that as well. Okay, And head over to the other side and do the same thing. Now, because I only drew one side, half of it, I need to mirror it over. So the reality is I don't need this little line that I drew earlier. So let's delete that. Let's grab all of this line work and we'll use the mirror command with the pick method and there you go now when you're building families and you're using the mirror command just because you mirror it doesn't mean that the sketch lines align and lock by default to other reference planes you need to make sure that those apply as well and then you can do by the way do multiple alignment Now, if you look very carefully at my mouse, my arrowhead pointer is not even touching the line work. It's a little off. And that has to do with the driver of the mouse that you're working with. So just be very cautious when you're working in this kind of mode uh, to ensure that it's drawn properly. So now I have my sketch. It's a nice, closed, clean loop. Um, it's reactive to the width and everything. we we'll head over to the exterior elevation. And I don't need to worry about the extrusion start or end. It's going to go off as a foot, but that's okay because we're going to adjust the height of it. So finish the sketch by hitting the green check mark, and it builds it. I'm going to shade it, and you can see it. Select the geometry and use the arrow key to pull up so that it aligns, and then you can lock it to the top. You, de you also need to do the bottom as well. That way, when the current panel adjusts in size, 
then everything adjusts accordingly. Now that you're done, you can save this family as a curtain panel. So I'm going to call it test curtain panel one. And then I can actually load this into a project to use. So I'll start a new Revit project. Oops. Let's do one off of the architectural template file, not the construction template file. There are slight differences, but since this is more from an architectural application, let's use the architectural template file instead. So again, new architectural. OK. We can jump back to that particular family and load it into the project. Now that it's loaded in the project, I can use that panel. How do I use the panel? Use the wall command, scroll down in the type selector to the storefront, or any one of these three that you're working with. And I'm going to draw it just a regular storefront so you can see what that looks like. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate the storefront and call it my custom one. Custom curtain wall with custom panel. And then in here under curtain panel, I can switch this to the one that I loaded earlier. If you don't load it, you're not going to see it in this drop down list, so make sure you load it. We don't have any horizontals, so I'm going to get rid of the horizontals. We don't need to have any mullions, so I'm going to make sure the vertical and horizontal mullions are set to none. And so when you're finished with all of the settings and hit OK, You've created a brand new one, and then I can click and drag and draw it. So let's go ahead and draw one and see what happens. Let's look at this in 3D. And you can see the panel is created. I'm going to shade it, and there you go. I'm going to select it and I'll rotate it over so you can see the other side as well. So one of the things you want to be cognizant about is the start and the end of each of the current panels and how they may or may not overlap. So you might have to adjust the sketch design to make it look cleaner um, or, you know, accept it for what it is. But that's how you go about creating a curtain wall panel as a family, whether just as a generic family for usage or as a curtain panel within a curtain panel family that can be used in a project. Thank you very much for watching.